This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. Last week, I did the impossible. I played Cyberpunk on a $150 laptop at a coffee shop without ever plugging it in. And it was great. I got a lot of weird looks, but it was still great. If you're struggling to build or buy a PC for whatever reason, this could be a great stopgap solution for you. And I'm surprised I haven't talked about it more on the channel because it's free. So let's do that. I'm always on the lookout for healthy ways to save money when building computers. And I'm pretty sure I've exhausted almost every single affordable gaming PC option out there, except for the divisive alternative of cloud gaming. Well, divisive according to the Twitter poll that I posted a few months ago. Some people are against cloud gaming and understandably so. It will never be as good as local gaming on your own physical hardware. At the end of the day, you're streaming your game from a computer more Chad than yours in NVIDIA's server room somewhere. But in an era where video cards can sometimes cost more than your literal kidneys in some areas, we gotta make some compromises. I decided to give cloud gaming a shot. Now there are multiple options, but I chose GeForce Now for two main reasons. One, it's free. That was like 90% of it. And two, you get access to your Steam, Epic Games, and Ubisoft library, so I don't have to pay extra like some places out there. Now Rockstar and Bethesda, those are exceptions to the rule simply because they hate all things fun. I'm only kidding, it's because of copyright. With nothing to lose, except maybe the ability to play GTA and Skyrim, I tried out GeForce Now, and it was bad. The input delay was fine, but the stuttering and the lag spikes were insane. And so I thought to myself, why is this getting such rave reviews? What am I missing here? New World, the game I primarily chose to test GeForce Now, is still fairly unoptimized. And streaming the game from a computer doesn't change that. As a matter of fact, if you're assigned one of the free tier GeForce Now PCs with only four cores and four threads, which you have a pretty good likelihood of happening, you're gonna suffer greatly. But after switching to an optimized game, it was a game changer, pun intended. I tried Black Desert Online and it was a ton of fun. Input delay was not noticeable and stuttering was minor. It allowed me to enjoy this broke boy Sasuke roleplay thing I had going on and I really enjoyed it. All of this at 1920 by 1080 with medium in-game settings and 60 FPS. I'm not gonna act like it was totally identical to playing it locally on my computer. There's still some downsides. Like I said, input delay was not noticeable, but the sharpness and the pixelation of the graphics were. It just wasn't a deal breaker. And of course, this is the best case scenario. I mean, I'm playing this on my main desktop with a download speed of over 300 megabits per second. What would it look like in a more realistic scenario? So this is a $150 laptop from 2015 and it actually might be slower than the device that you're using to watch this video. But for this test, it's perfect. And here's why. GeForce Now is great if A, you have a MacBook or an incompatible device with most of the games that you wanna play, or you B, have a computer that's just very slow. It can't play your games. I guess there's also C, you have a slow MacBook, which that would just suck, right? Unfortunately, this laptop fits into that last special category. It has a dual core i5 with integrated graphics, eight gigs of RAM, built-in Wi-Fi, and a 256 gig SSD. Honestly, it's the perfect candidate for something like this. Now, regardless of the aforementioned hardware, if your internet sucks, none of that really matters. Now, the recommended internet speed is 25 megabits per second down for 1080p 60, and then 15 megabits per second down for 720p 60. With that in mind, I asked Comcast if they could throttle my speed to 50 megabits per second. Not only was that the fastest I've ever heard back from customer service, but it also gave me the opportunity to experience GeForce Now in a more realistic scenario. And here's what I found. You can cloud game with slower internet. Now I won't lie, it's not an ideal experience, and this is with the lower resolution of 1280 by 720. Still, if you're coming from integrated graphics, I'm sure you wouldn't mind much, and it's doable. 15 megabits per second also isn't the minimum for GeForce Now. You can totally get by with like seven or eight if your connection is stable. I played Black Desert Online on this laptop with a max bit rate of about 10 megabits per second, and it was still fun. 
And this was at a coffee shop with a packet loss more than triple what NVIDIA recommended. We still got by. Also, a lot of older laptops use resolutions under 1080p and they don't use big 24 inch screens like desktops. So you can get by with a lower resolution and it won't look like a blurry upscaled point and shoot image from like 2006. Gaming as a result is fun and relaxing. In all honesty, second to your internet connection, the most important part are your GeForce Now settings. If they're reflective of the internet speed you have, it's gonna be a good experience. If not, it's gonna be really bad. Make sure you have good internet connection, otherwise it's going to be really bad. For example, here I'm about to click. <laughs> See how late that is? So do a few speed tests and cap your GeForce Now bandwidth to half of the lowest speed that you got out of the handful of tests you did. After that, just tweak your GeForce Now settings and see what happens and find a place that works best for your computer. Generally speaking, you want to cap your bandwidth and then you want to find a server that's closest to you. And remember, this is all free. So you really have nothing to lose. Just try it out for yourself and see if it works. Now, when it comes to fast paced esport games, it was a doable experience. I swear I got a kill. I just didn't record it. Don't expect to get high elo or be like shroud murking people on the free version of GeForce Now. But if you have a good internet connection, it will still be fun. I tried Fortnite and it was fun. And the cool thing about the human body is its willingness to adapt. After about five, six, maybe 10 minutes in Fortnite, I got used to the performance and I enjoyed it. And this is coming from someone with a 3080 in their main computer. Just to confirm that I wasn't spewing garbage, I got my roommate Jonathan, who plays Apex pretty religiously, to test out GeForce Now. We had a few hiccups only because Jonathan wasn't used to my keyboard, mouse, and key bindings. But after fixing that, he was off to the races. This is what he thought. You can perform decently, like we were able to get the win. I mean, I got carried though, obviously. There were some issues, like I was using a sniper rifle. You couldn't really see stuff at a distance because the pixels, uh, you can usually see the little pixel moving. But with this, it was kind of pixelated at a distance, so you couldn't really tell. If you were wanting to play at a high level, like ranked or something like that, I'd say it wouldn't be the best for that because it will limit your performance. So out of 10, what would you rate it just overall? Well, the baseline uh, is the setup I'm used to, which is, uh, Ryzen 5600X and a RTX 3070. And so I would give this maybe like a seven. I give my setup like a 10 because it's basically how I want the setup exactly. So cloud gaming, have I convinced you yet? If not, totally understandable because it's not all sunshine and roses. Firstly, there's the data consumption. It can easily reach 15 gigs an hour on the free version and then double that on the premium versions of GeForce Now. So if you have a monthly data cap for internet, you must monitor this, otherwise you will get additional costs. That's no bueno. And then you have the queue system. Essentially, if you're playing a game at a very busy time and a lot of the computers are booked, Nvidia will put you in a queue. The longest I've waited was about 25 minutes and that was on Christmas evening. And it doesn't seem like that long, but when you're just sitting there scrolling through TikToks, waiting for your queue to pop, kind of feels like an eternity. And then there are the obvious downsides slash higher requirements that I've already talked about in the video. You need good internet, network stability. You're limited in performance for fast paced esport titles. And even with all of that, I still recommend it because the barrier of entry is so low. You can use GeForce Now on your MacBook. You can use it on your old laptop. You can use it on your auntie's old Android phone from like 2013. You can use it on your iPhone. You can use it on so many different devices. Basically, if your device has network capabilities and it can run Google Chrome, it can run GeForce Now, which is pretty insane. Now for me, I already have my desktop and I'm very satisfied with its performance, but there are times where I go to travel and see family or I'll go somewhere for an extended period of time. I don't wanna lug around my entire desktop and all the monitors. So I can just take my laptop and then if I want to bum around and play The Forest or Black Desert, I can do that with GeForce Now and I only pay as much as I wanna pay. So even if you already have like a desktop computer and you don't really need it, it's still a good option to at least try out. So as you guys can see, GeForce Now is great value. And thankfully, so is our sponsor, CuriosityStream. You've probably heard of them, but CuriosityStream is a big budget video streaming service for nonfiction videos and documentary content. And they currently host thousands of titles. 
If you're into video essays like myself, then you'll probably like their service. And now they're collaborating very closely with the video streaming platform, Nebula. The Streamy Award nominated platform was built by independent creators for independent creators. And it currently hosts some of my personal favorites like Low Spec Gamer, Marquez Brownlee, and strange parts. Nebula provides a place for independent creators to try out new ideas without worrying about the algorithm bullying our content into oblivion. It gives us a lot of freedom to expand without any of the concerns. And because CuriosityStream loves independent creators so much, they're actually bundling Nebula for free when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link curiositystream.com slash OztalksHW. So as long as you're subscribed to CuriosityStream, you get a second streaming service for free. By signing up, you help creators like myself and other educational or tech creators. Plus you get access to really cool titles like Titans of Wall Street, which talks about the origins of American wealth. If you've ever wondered why there's so much grandiosity in the country. This could be a good series for you to check out. If you're interested, click the link in the description. So that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully you found it informative or entertaining or both. If that's the case, then definitely subscribe so you can catch more videos in the future. Leave a like, share, comment, all that kind of stuff. Now to celebrate just how excited I am that this is an option for people now, I'm going to give away two two month GeForce Now memberships that are vouched at about $20 each. This way, if you want to try it out, the premium options, and you have the opportunity to do so. All the giveaway details will be in a Gleam link or some kind of link in the description. So just check it out and you'll be able to enter. All right, so that's it for this video, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Is that weird? Blowing a kiss. <laughs> like that was really weird.